Hey, welcome to the Audacity Bootcamp. Let's talk about a couple more features that are new in Audacity 2.4.1. A couple of useful features within Audacity 2.4.1 is the ability to export files quicker and more efficiently and to move the time toolbar to a position that best suits you. So let's talk about those two things. In this screen that I have open here, I have a waveform opened up, and let's say for the sake of conversation that I'm ready to export this file to my podcast or whatever I'm going to export it to. The procedure is the same. If I come up here to File, drop down menu, and I go to Export, I still, it doesn't look any different at this point, but the difference is when I click on one of these, if I click on Export as MP3, you'll notice that instead of opening up the MP3 window, it opens up the Export Audio window and it gives me other options of how to export this file. For example, in the file type, I don't have to stay with MP3. I can choose any file format that I want, but because the last time I picked export to MP3, Audacity now remembers my settings, which is a real time saver when you're, if you're exporting a lot of audio. And so in this instance, it remembers that I sampled my MP3 at 320 kilobits with a variable speed of fast, as well as forcing the export to a mono file. So now Audacity remembers that. It remembers that the last time I clicked MP3, this is what I did. It assumes this is what I want to do again. And if it is what you want to do again, it's a real time saver because you don't have to go through this window and set everything up over and over again each time you're exporting your file. Now, if I cancel out of here and I go back up to File Export one more time, and this time I select Wave, Again, it opens up that same export audio window. It gives me other options. I don't have to stay in WAVE, but I can. You remember that if you were exporting files in WAVE before in Audacity, again, you always had to go through this and set it up the way that you wanted to export it. Well, again, in 2.4.1, it remembers my setting. The last time I exported a file as a WAVE file, it knew that I had it set up for 24-bit uh, pulse code modulation, which is how I exported it. It remembers that, but it also gives me a lot of other options now that weren't present prior to version 2.4.1. So if I cancel out of here one more time, and I go up to File, and I go to Export, and this time I just want to export audio. Remember this export audio window used to be unique to this selection right here of exporting audio. Now it's that same window that opens up for MP3 and WAVE and whatever other format that I'm using. The last time I exported audio, it remembers that I exported it as an M4A when I selected the export audio feature. And so again, it comes up, it remembers that, it remembers the sampling rate that I used. And again, this is a real time saver if you're doing a lot of exporting of audio files. You don't have to go through the setup each time anymore. It's a lot quicker, it's a lot better, it's a lot faster. That's exporting files in 2.4.1. Let me show you one more thing. Also new in 2.4.1 is the ability to move the time toolbar to a different location. You can see that now I can grab it, I can undock it. If I would need my time toolbar to be more prominent in a more prominent location, I can just place it anywhere within the WAV file or within the track, I mean. And as I'm recording or playing back, I'll know the exact location of the playhead. If that's an issue, if that's something that you need to do that you require, then this can be really helpful. This can be a very helpful tool. Not only can you place it here within the track, but you can also dock it in the upper toolbar. And if you're done with it, you don't want it there, you can also move it back down to the bottom. So the ability to take that Audacity Time toolbar and move it around is another feature unique to 2.4.1. I want to talk about one more thing before I let you go. While this isn't new to Audacity 2.4.1, it tends to get kind of obscured by other features. Have you ever had a scenario happen where you've started Audacity and then once you start Audacity, you realize you didn't have all of your hardware plugged in? Let's say you had a USB mic and you forgot to plug it in. You started Audacity, you're ready to record and you realize, oh no, I didn't plug my mic in. One solution is to shut down Audacity and restart it because every time Audacity starts, it scans all of your audio hardware. In this instance, when it scanned my hardware, all it saw was a built-in microphone as far as my input device is concerned because that's all I've got plugged into it. But let's say I had a USB mic that I plugged in after I started Audacity. It still won't recognize it. The built-in microphone would be the only thing that it uh, presents to me as an option to record. Well, I don't have to shut Audacity down in order to rescan my hardware. If I come up to the Transport Toolbar, 
and I simply select Rescan Audio Devices, Audacity goes out and rescans all of my audio hardware, and anything that I've plugged in subsequent to starting Audacity will now appear in that drop down window. In this case, I haven't plugged anything new in, but if I had, it would appear here and then I could select it. So while it's not new to Audacity 2.4.1, it is something useful to keep in mind. It's something you don't hear a lot about. It's something that kind of gets lost in the shuffle, but it's a very powerful and useful feature of Audacity. So that's it for this time. Hey, if you like what's going on here with the Audacity Bootcamp, please consider subscribing. I just recently launched this channel, and I'm hoping to load it up with valuable information that's useful to you. Until next time.